Okay, on in three, two, one. Hello, good people. How are you doing today? Glad to have you with us. This is Wooly Mammoth, and we hope that you hit like and subscribe. This is going to be your last shot at uh, signing up, hitting subscribe on YouTube. In order to win a free prize, we got Japanese candies here, beautifully wrapped boxes. If you get them and decide you didn't want them, then you just pass them on as a uh, Easter gift of some sort. You're going to love that. We also have some great t-shirts. We have the uh, um, United States Space Force mugs. We have... Uh, original Japan t-shirts, United States Space Force hats, and for those of you who are collectors, you want to grab those things and hang on to them because those are the official United States Space Foot, uh, our Space Foot, <laughs> Space Force uh, gear, and uh, their t-shirts, really really and soon. they're coming out probably um maybe in a year but this was the first edition and the united states space force is real we have soldiers for that here on base and uh they're around the world everybody knows that they're in texas is their big one but uh we are excited to see them all around the world set up to defend our satellites, our airspace, and our planet in case of alien invasion. Hey, yes, that's a very real thing now here in the 21st century. All right, well, we have a special guest waiting online for us. That's right, I said special guest. All right. The, uh, okay, I want to make sure I was still on. We have this special guest, and we're excited about this follow-up phone call. And we have here today, Lynn Buck. That's right, folks, Lynn Buck, once again. Are you with us today, Lynn? I sure am, and greetings from Kentucky to Wooly Mammoth. Of Japan, you and the missus, my Ken and I, we've been listening to you faithfully. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn, and we've been looking forward to this call from you. You told us you would give us a follow-up call, and uh, we want to know how is your trip coming along? What's going on for it? Uh, you got the yeah. money ready to go? Everything set up? Or you have anything special going on at home? What's happening, Lynn? Well, actually, we've hit some roadblocks, and now little Dickie, he's all too familiar with what I tried to plan, our little escape vacation. Oh, so he knows about Tokyo. He sure does, and he's excited, but we figured we needed more money. Now, why did you, why did you tell him? Or am I getting ahead of your story? No, no, not at all. Please, feel free to interrupt. You might pull out some information I have filed and forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, what happened, my niece was so excited to hear a conversation. She played it for the whole family. We was out by the fire pit, and... Uh, she played it, and little Nicky, he looks at me, and he says, Mama, is that you? And I said, yeah, honey. <laughs> uh, I, I planned this vacation for you, hon. And uh, we celebrated, and we drank our moonshine all night long, and we were dancing, and it was just a great old time. But then I 
I got a notification that there's some restrictions. Yes. Um, yes. And I figured, you know what? Lynn, save a little more money. It's not the end of the world. So that's what little Dickie and I, we plan on doing. So I came up with an idea, if you don't mind, I'm going to share something. I, I, would, I would love to have this, but before you do that, I, I need to ask you a question um, from what we gathered from you while you were there waiting to come online, that little Dickie thought you was a cheating on him? Yes. yes. What I happened? Told missus. Well, I told your missus the whole story. Right. Body now, shame. everyone, everyone knows I'm six foot four. I weigh 340 pounds. Got flaming red hair. And I like my body tattoos. And for this occasion, I shave myself. Wow. I shave, I shave my legs. I tried to pull myself together. But what happened? I was getting all dolled up. And uh, little Dickie's watching me, and he said, Mama, where are you going? And I said, Honey, I'm going down to the hurdy gurdy. I'm going to get me a job. Mm. He said, All right, all right. I said, I need your blessings. You know the way I can move, how I can dance, how I light your eyes up. I'm not doing it to fall in love with another man, but I'm doing it so we can get some money. So, I get all fancied up, get in my pickup truck, head down to the hurdy gurdy, walk in, speak with management. I said, I'm here. I'm applying. Good for you. To be a pole, to be a pole dancer. He chuckles. All right, that's fine. Wait till you see what I got. Wait till you see me. He said, I'm going to let you dance for us. There was about eight men there. Two of them had to help me get up on the stage. Oh, my. Now, did you wear one of them dancing outfits? You had red, white, uh, red, white, and blue thong with tassels on the on the front side of you. I'm proud to do it. I'm hoping that someone from uh, the White House will call if they hear this, and oh. they'll have me get up and dance for the world, because I will. Anyway, then, so the one gentleman, he helps me hold on to the pole, and I got myself situated, and they said, what song do you want us to play? And I said... Oh, it's a, I think it's a George Strait song. She's my sweet little queen. She's my pride and joy. And me, little Dickie, I'm going to love her. You know, I, I improvise. Well, when I think of little Dickie laying there on the bearskin rug, I'll tell you, I can dance like no woman can dance. Anyway, I get up, I start dancing. I was able to lift my head. High, my arms were flying high. I had my leg go behind my head, and I'm looking at their faces. I'm making sure we're making eye contact. I'm locking into their eyes. Well, they were as big as saucers. You could have heard a pin drop. No one moved. It was like thunder and lightning hit that that old roadhouse, that stinky old roadhouse. And uh, so I get done, and while I'm done, that thing pull falls down to the floor. And I, everyone, everyone just kind of put their head down and then looked up at me, and I'm, I'm looking at all of them, and I told me, and I said, I can fix this. I'll, I'll have my, my men come in, my crew, they'll fix the pole for you. But what do you say? Do we got a deal? 
Now, why did you want this job so bad? I need the job so I can have the extra money and also, I better, I can eat my wings and things. I can eat my french fries. I can shut down some bears when I want to. It's all free. All right. Well, so, you know, my, my heart broke because he looked at me and he said, we, we don't have a position for someone your size. And I look at him and I said, I'm going to tell you something. Three of your girls over there, those little petite petunias, equal one of me. So you want to pay three separate girls instead of just paying me. Way to go. I can make the men feel like they're shooting stars. He told me to pack my stuff up and go, and I told him, I said, I have the perfect platform to let people know how you body shame women like me. That's and right. Not, that's why and your missus told me, she said, it's all right, man. You let the world know. Don't you hang your head down. Mm -mm. And that's why I'm here today. Now, I'm a, I'm a feller of big statue, as you've seen in my videos. Stature, big, big statue, <laughs> big stature. And I applaud you for that. I really do. In fact, what I'm going to do here, Lynn, is I'm going to offer an opportunity to all of you out there that if you're tired of this body shaming, she, I'm tired of it. Well, I'm, ta I'm talking to the other listeners. If you're tired of this body shaming, she went down to the local hurdy gurdy uh, down there in Boone County or Boone uh, State Park. That's a, a strip club if you haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, that's another name for it, a hurdy gurdy. And uh, she tried to perform, and they just didn't like the way she looked. And if you're appalled at that, as I am, I need you to send me a comment, and I'm going to gather all them comments up, and I'm going to have them shipped down to uh, the Hurdy Gurdy down there, as well as the uh, uh, Daniel Boone State Park in Boone County, so that they could hear that the people around the world, some of us, Think, hey, we like the bigger women, right? Ask I, little Dicky. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Not, nothing at all. And I really would appreciate if uh, your subscribers would write in. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you from my heart. Uh, you know, it's not nice to have anyone body shame you for any, any reason. And uh, I feel I feel good about myself. Well, did you good? did you keep the red, white, and blue thong and the tassels? Well, of course, of course. <laughs> well, when I got home, I was in tears, and I told Little Baker what happened, and he called that manger a yellow belly snappy sucker. I don't know. He just went off and off, and uh, they got in the truck and they turned. There you go. Now I heard though, this is this is what Miss Mammoth told me, that uh, when you first got home you found uh, little Dickie in a peculiar position. What? Oh, he was laying in fetal position. He, oh. he was in fetal position. He was so worried about me and he, he wasn't too sure if this was a legit job I was seeking or was I putting on the tassels for Tommy and that's and, another and for story for Tom, yeah Tommy who's Tommy well Tommy Tommy's my second cousin 
And they said long stories that uh, Tommy and I, we were caught down by the pond, skinned to death. And this was years ago. And we was kissing. And I told little Dickie that would never happen again. But in his mind, he still thinks Tom he has some kind of uh, control or power over me. And it's not true. Oh. It, it, it's all good now. So, you know, so my, my second thing is, all right, body shaming is wrong. And excuse me, that's my first thing. And my second thing is, when you fall flat on your face, which I pretty much did when I took that pole down. <laughs> I have to light up about it because, you know, that's a, that's a big pole, and I took it down. I should have swung it at them, but I didn't. <laughs> I, would have, I would have paid to see that. I didn't do that. But what I can't say is when, when you fall on your face, people... Get back up. Get back up. There you go. Get back up. Glorious thing. I'm, I'm going to tell you what happened. So I get home. I say, listen, he is fetal position. And it hit me just like, why, Lana? Do a double story outhouse. Save everything. I think they call it compost, the fancy people. We just call it going number two. <laughs> <laughs> using it as fertilizer, okay? That's what we call it down there. Anyway. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I got to get caught up here, okay? Yeah. You're, you, you, you're building a, a two-decker outhouse, yes. and you're going to use the number two for fertilizing your crops. The same way people use cow's poop. But yeah. you're, you're going to use people poop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. We, we know what we're eating. Yeah, we know, know what, what it eating. would smell like. Well, that became a little bit of a problem right now. Uh, we're working on it with good ventilation. But I'm going to make my own moonshine. Mm -hmm. I figured that everything out within 24 hours. 24 hours, little Dickie and I, we know how to make quick money. Mm -hmm. So, we're, we're doing the double store outhouse. I take top. <laughs> I told him right now, I take the top. And he has the bottom. And he has the bottom. Is there a good view from the bottom? <laughs> Is there a good view from the top? Oh, yes. I put in a little window. Look out at the little chickadees and the little titmouses. They're the cutest little birds on earth. Anyway, so we see How do you get up? How do you get up to the second floor? Oh, I have steps. Oh, okay. All right. And what is that? You can actually sell the double decker outhouses. You think there's a big market for them? I'm going to ask my niece. I'm going to ask my niece to post it and we'll see what people say. Well, you got to call me back and let me hear some more about that. I will. I will. But we're, so that's what we're doing. And then uh, I don't know how else make money hopefully you know with what you just said that's an, another idea we could build double decker outhouses for people now from what i hear is you and little dicky and billy bong or billy bones i'm sorry billy bones are going to be making some of your old homemade recipe oh of course well uh billy bones is uh little dicky's son now, I, I call him my nephew, 
because he's also my nephew. It's a long story, if you understand my family trait. So, uh, Grandma gave them a recipe for the, the greatest moonshine on earth. So, yes, the men, they'll be doing that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm still back there with... Uh, Billy Bones being your stepson and your nephew. That, I, I can't, I, 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 are you your own aunt? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. Yeah, it's, uh, one day I'll, I'll show you how the family tree works. <laughs> it's wonderful. We're, we're all, we're all interrelated. <laughs> all convoluted there, huh? <laughs> A big old convolution. Some say it's celestial, or what, in in some how many? Celestial, insexual. Insexual. Celestial. I was wondering <laughs> how. Yeah, I was wondering how you got celestial. It's insensual. No, that's wrong. Too. No, that's wrong. What is it? Incestual. Incestual. Well, I mean, um, who? I mean, there's so many famous people that have done this, you know. I mean, a lot of people will stop us and ask questions, and Gray falls a fire. But he married his little cousin. Yes, he did, didn't he? Uh, I, you know, I mean, yeah. this is not a big thing for us, and look at the royal family. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I, I understand your reference points. I... Just never met anybody who was their own aunt and their own stepmother. It makes <laughs> something like that. Yeah. When you think about it, you're your own stepmother-in-law. Yeah, well, I think that's where that um, there's a phrase: a woman wears many hats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a myself. I'm a grandma to myself. I'm a grandma. <laughs> Do you get yourself a lot of presents on the holidays? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, Grandparents' Day, yeah, Children's much. Day. Pretty much. I, I hit the spectrum, that's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. Well, now, so what I want to tell you is we've... Uh, we're, we're planning on coming to Japan still, and that's going to be late July, August now, especially with all the restrictions. We don't want any problems, and we want to make sure we abide and respect all law and authority. We want to do everything right, but this is a great opportunity for us to save and make more money for our wonderful vacation. And I was also looking into the KRV that Japan has. And then after speaking with your missus, I realized that even their KRV camper is real tiny. So everything we do, we're going to have to go to hotels and try to get uh, the normal size bedding and definitely the toilets where, you know, I can I can sit down properly. And so it's going to be a lot oh, nicer. And we're um, all excited now. And so the they do have, one. sorry to interrupt, they do have um, beds like you're used to, but they also have the ones that are just like on the floor as well, like the Japanese style like, well, almost like a mat. 300 at night to sleep on the floor. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Right. You know why? Right. It's been like people coming down to visit me, and I say, okay, you sleep out on the floor now. Good night. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's not quite on the floor, but it's, it's a little mat. mat on the floor. But at least you give them bare skin rug to sleep on. You and little Dickie's love nest. Now I want my bed nice and soft and fluffy and clean and smelling clean and I want pretty clean linens on it and I, I just want to feel good when I lay down and sleep. I don't want to be sleeping on a floor. 
floor and there's little insects crawling up on my mattress. Okay, okay, I get you. But now, how are you gonna make money with moonshine? Well, it's a market for moonshine. Plus, you can trade also. Lots of bartering, trading. If you had grandma's moonshine, you would never, never buy moonshine at any liquor store. You would never. You would never order it at any pub and bar. Well, now, where are you going to sell it at? I'm going to sell it on my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to just sit there on her front porch. I understand. Come to you? Yeah, you live up in a holler. We have plenty of neighbors. And I'll tell you what, on a sleepy night, Park Ranger loves the moonshine we made a couple years ago. Okay. Yes, no, we're, it's fine. There's no more racing with the white line. And everybody just sells it on the front porch. But they love <laughs> Gertrude's moonshine the best. What is it called? Gertrude? Gertrude. Gertrude's white lightning? Yeah. Now, is that, is that a, 150 proof? <laughs> I understand you're going to give uh, little Dickie a bottle of that to drink before you get on the plane. Yes, I am. Is a, isn't, a, isn't a bottle of that going to be uh, kind of a little too much? We're used to it. Our guts are like steel, like the barrel. <laughs> We got barrel intestines. <laughs> 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 so old little Dickie likes that moonshine, huh? It sure does. Is there any flavors to it? Or? That's just that's just corn moonshine. There's, are you gonna add any flavors to it? Any strawberries or blueberries? Yes, we've already we've already discussed that. We're gonna add a little elderberry. Elderberry? Elderberry? Yes. What about some apple Applejack? Boysenberry. Boysenberry? And honey moonshine. Did you ever have honey moonshine? No, I never did. Oh, it's smooth. Uh, I never understood. You know, I know all cultures have their uh, liquors. You, you got your tequila, you got your vodka, and that's all good. Well, honey moonshine is known. You need to get moonshine on the, the spot. Honey moonshine is known as mead. That's what the Vikings drunk all the time, that mead. It's fermented honey. It's fermented honey to make moonshine. Now, are you going to make some Applejack? <laughs> Wait a minute! You've told us all this stuff and you're keeping that part secret? Well, well, maybe that shows me more time and I haven't figured that one out yet. Now, can I send you some? Do you want me to send you some? You couldn't uh, yeah. send it out of the country, but I'd love to get a picture of it. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know what I would do with it. I, well, actually, we already figured out what the label will look like. My niece already drawn and it's gonna oh this is so cool it's gonna be uh the double decker uh, house <laughs> on the label is part of our label <laughs> what do they call that <laughs> where they keep showing the um and I figure I figure you can have some bumblebees flying around the outhouse, but then my niece and Auntie. She's, you know, so prim and proper. Auntie. Your uh, your and niece and auntie. Flies, flies on poop. Oh, that's and true. That's true. And it's a bumblebee. Come on, honey. Make now, yellow and black. Now it's a little cold outside there in the uh, states there in uh, Boone County down in uh, down by the Hurdy Gurdy. 
Um, how are you, uh, the, you know, you got to have these uh, corn buds up here pretty quick, knee high that's by the 4th of why, July. That's why I said come August we'll be heading out for Japan. We have to wait for everything, but it will, it's a quick production. But how are you uh, pre-plant, where are you pre-planting these at? I mean, you got to get it into kind of a warmer oh, environment. In the house, in the house. In the house? Doesn't that kind of smell with the human waste fertilizing them? You get used to the smell, you get used to the stank. <laughs> I don't know that I can ever get used to that stank. <laughs> you get used to the stank. You just do. Well, you know what helps is that you're taking shots of the moonshine. Things, you know, we had moonshine for the last ten, five one year that we starve, so we just drink a little shot here and there, you don't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I would be able to drink your moonshine if it rips a hole in your esophagus. Uh, I couldn't handle that, that is for sure. I, I'd be, uh, I got myself an ulcer as it is, I'd drink any of that stuff and I'm going to be up all night throwing up or something. How will you build a tolerance to it? <laughs> you just build your tolerance. <laughs> and again, that's why I told you we lack our grits. Uh, there's a reason, there's a reason why people eat the grits in the morning with their moonshine. The grits with the throat to your throat. The grits stick to your throat. Well, not now the grits. Don't you end up with a bunch of grits left over after you brew the shine? We use grits many different ways. You can make pancakes with it. You could even do facials with grits. Did you know a, a grit facial will take those wrinkles out? <laughs> well, I don't have any wrinkles yet, but I'll keep that in mind. But. What, do you soak it moonshine all night long and then put it on the next morning? Everything. Oh. Did you remember there's a movie, it was a Greek man, and he had a bottle of Windex, and he was spraying Windex. Yes, yes. Who had a big pimple on her face, right? Yeah, yeah my big I'm fat Greek you, wedding. I'm telling you, moonshine does everything. It strips paint. Off a wall. <laughs> You're gonna drink it. It cleans your grains. You got clogged grains. You pour it down your kitchen sink. But bam, it's gone. <laughs> so, uh, moonshine is Kentucky's answer to the Greek and the Windex. Is I, that? I Moonshine is Kentucky's answer to the Grecian Windex situation. Definitely. All right. Definitely. Well, Lynn. Like all cultures, all cultures have their, like I said before, they have their liquors. And uh, for us, the moonshine is the cure all to all. Awesome. It really is. Well, Lynn, we, we've got to get going. Um, I'm expecting some calls. We got uh, Mama Maria is going to be calling us from New York City. Uh, we have the Count of Argentina who's going to be calling us and uh, from Argentina. And uh, we have other places that were uh, having people calling and sharing us with us their story. But I don't know if you caught this. Uh, or not, so I'm going to uh, recapture this. If uh, Lynn Buck gave us a beautiful lesson here. If you put it all out there for the world to see and you fall flat on your face and all that's sticking out is the moon. <laughs> Remember to get up, brush yourself off, and shine once again. All right? Great to have you with us, folks. 
Great that you were here, Lynn. Will you promise to call us back? I, I love how you ended that. Well, thank you. I started to cry right now. Oh. <laughs> I started to cry. You are so right. And I hope other people hear that message. It was beautiful. And with joy, I'll call you back. I'll send in pictures. And uh, maybe your subscribers don't know voice their opinion about the label for the moonshine. I say double decker outhouse with little bumblebees flying around. Maybe other people have different ideas. I need to market this quick. Thank you so much. You and the missus and have a beautiful day in Japan. Alright and put put a put a honeycomb there at the top of the uh second floor uh outhouse and then they'll know that those are bees. <laughs> okay, you got me there. I wasn't even thinking that. Well, maybe you have a bar. Sunflower. <laughs> a little sunflower and maybe a bear. Have have a bear trying to climb up the the outhouse. Okay. That would make more sense. Yeah. Well, they got a lot of bar down there. Uh huh. All right. Well, Lynn, I feel positive and rejuvenated talking with you both. Well, I'm telling you what, you uh, bring a lot of joy in my heart when I, I hear you talk and I hear that deep southern accent of yours, and uh, it reminds me of my family's Appalachian roots, and uh, I get the he and a hauling with you. Uh, folks, I'd like for you to send those comments, uh, uh, really supporting Lynn Buck, and remember to like and subscribe. Yes, what? Hi, y'all. I just wanted to show you my uh, one floor uh, outhouse, and next time you see this uh, little dicky and I, we're going to have it as a two-story well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the ongoing saga of Lynn Bach. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and keep your eye open. We're going to do the giveaways. Super. Have a great day.